Okay, so now that we've created a arm rig, I'm going to go ahead and create a leg rig for this character. I'm going to start out by hiding everything that goes wrong with that arm rig, and using Control G, I'm going to create a group. I'm just going to name it a bunch of underscores. And the reason for that is just to make my outliner a little more uh, organized. Basically, anything I created for this is going to happen after this. We're going to see the delineation between them. All right, we'll start by laying out my joints. So I'm going to joint tool and I'm just going to hold down shift to draw the hip, knee, and ankle. And I grab out one last joint at the end so that this ankle will point directly straight down. And then I'm going to draw in the ball joint and the toe joint. So really that's just there so we can rotate off of the foot in this particular spot right here. So let's select these and let's look at their local rotation axes. And what I'm going to do is select this ball joint and just parent it underneath the ankle joint by hitting P, just like we would any other type of grouping operation. And now that I've done that, I don't need this lower joint anymore. But you do see that my local rotation axis is oriented more like world space rather than being oriented down this joint right here, because that would make the, the leg rotate, or the ankle rotate something like this, which is not what I tend to do. Now the next thing I do is just make sure that my local rotation axes all match each other. So I have Z front, Z front, Z front, and now this is Y up, which is as if we had made this curve, we would expect the Z to go up. So to do that, I'm just going to select the joint and go to component mode. And I'm going to turn on local rotation axes. That's how you do it here. It was already on, but I can just click it on right there. And what that will allow me to do is actually select that local rotation handle and using E or rotate and J to snap rotations, I can now rotate that so it's perfectly in line with all the rest of the joints. The one thing you'll notice is when I'm in translate mode that my translation doesn't line up with my ro local rotation axis. So to change that I have a simple script which is joint-e-zso. And what that's going to do is now align these local rotations or local transformations to the local uh, rotations so they match each other. I'll go ahead and name these. This is hip joint. And knee joint. And ankle joint. Ball joint. And toe joint. Great. And now from the front view, I'm going to move it over so that it fits inside our geometry the way we'd want it. That should be fine. I can now actually hide my geometry temporarily until we get back to it again. I'm also going to turn off my local rotation axes. I don't need to see those anymore. So since we're adding IK to this, I need to make sure that I rotate in Y and Y only and do a set preferred angle. Put this back to zero. And now I can start adding some IK handles. So I'm going to go to my IK handle tool, make sure I'm using Rotate Plane Solver, and go from the hip to the ankle. I'll then create another IK handle from the ankle to the ball of the foot, and I'll create one last from the ball of the foot to the toe of the foot. Just like that. And I'm going to take the ankle IK handle and the ball IK handle, and I'm going to group them together using Control G. And you know, so that puts my pivot at 0, 0, 0. What I'm going to do is use Insert, and by holding down V, I'll snap that to exactly where that joint is right there. And this is our ball roll control. And what that's going to do for us is allow us to whoops, is allow us to rotate up off the foot at the ball. Right now our toes moving with us. But think of that as if you're taking a step when your heel comes off the ground. Then I'm going to take this front IK handle, the toe IK handle, and group it to itself again using control G. And I'm going to insert and V snap it to the same exact location. What that's going to be is like a toe flop or a toe control so we can just move our toe around. So I'm just going to name it toe control. I'm then going to select both of those and control G them. So I've grouped them together. And again I'm going to hit insert but this time I'm going to V snap it to the toe of the foot right in the front and I bring my geometry back. And What I want to do is put this pivot where the foot hits the ground. So I'm going to take this and just move it straight down somewhere around there. Now you'll notice that my geometry goes slightly below the zero. I'm going to leave it like that for this demonstration, but ideally you'd want your geometry right in line. And what that's going to do for us 
This allows us to lift that foot up off the toe, like so. If I go back to that toe control or that ball roll control, now that we've got a constraint on here, you can see that I'm now just lifting as if the heel is coming off the ground. And I'm going to name that toe roll. Now I'm going to take and group that to itself, control G again, using insert. I'm going to snap it to that toe. I'm going to move it back in Z and put it right at the base of my heel here. And what that's going to do is allow me to rotate my entire foot up the ground from the heel position. Something like that. Like if you're rocking back on your foot. And I'll name that heel roll. I'll then take all this, group it together. Again, it goes to the 0, 0, 0. I'm going to hit insert. And I'm going to V snap it directly to that joint. You notice that when I hit V, it actually snaps to parts of this polygon. If that's difficult, you can just hide the geometry. Oops. And you can just snap it straight to that joint. And this is actually going to be our foot control. And what that's going to be used for is the overall foot movement as well as rotating from the ankle. I can zero that back out.